Hey there, Jessica here. Today I'm going to show you how to retouch your photos using Photoshop. There are 1 million ways to retouch just one photo, and I believe that the best kind of retouching is a subtle kind. I am going to show you how to do retouching in a way that enhances the beauty and the natural features of the subject while still having a lot of creative control over your photos. Let's jump right in and get started. Here we are in Photoshop. This is the photo that we will be retouching today. This is a photo that I took a while ago. I think it's a perfect example of doing some light retouching because I think she looks beautiful already. We're just gonna be making some minor tweaks and changes. So in order to get this dialog box on your Photoshop, you're gonna want to open up your raw file. You always want to shoot in raw if you can, and this will allow you to get this screen when you first open it up in Photoshop. This isn't our Photoshop workspace, this is the dialog box that we can adjust our photo before we head into retouching. So I've already lightly edited this photo before we jump in, and you can see here, you can change all of the exposure, you, we have the curve detail and all of that good stuff. You can spend as much time as you would like adjusting your photo. And when you're ready to go into your Photoshop workspace, you can just go ahead and click open. There are so many different ways to retouch skin in Photoshop. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the spot healing brush. This is perfect if your photo just needs those slight adjustments and retouching. So we are going to be duplicating a layer before we start editing our photo at all. This is a way that we can be retouching our photo in a non-destructive way. If we ever need to go back to the original, this is how we're gonna do it. So don't forget to duplicate your layers and I will show you how to do that right now. So here I'm just going to right click on my mouse and I'm going to duplicate layer. I'm gonna name this spot healing. I like to keep this concise so I know exactly what the layer is and what I did on that layer. So I'm just going to click okay, and now we are going to work on this layer. So here we have the spot healing brush, and if we click and hold down, we have spot healing brush, healing brush, and patch tool. And these are all tools that we can use to retouch any skin blemishes, any lines, any funky shadows. That's all right here. So for this one, I'm just gonna use the spot healing brush. And as you see, we have all of these options in our brush. I'm going to leave this just as it is. I'm going to set this to replace and my brush and my hardness is right here. So I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit. I wanna soften up this brush a bit. And I'm just going to select all of these. I'm gonna do content aware, and we are good to go. If I do wanna change the size of my brush quickly, I can use the brackets on my keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna make it somewhat small and I'm just gonna zoom in on her beautiful face and we are just going to take away some of these spots. So I do want to keep the integrity of her skin and I do want to make sure that I'm not retouching so much because I'm just retouching these small little shadows and just smoothing everything out. So I'm just gonna speed up this process a bit more. You can spend as much time as you want using the Spot Healing Brush or any other brushes that you are using to retouch the skin. Remember that subtle changes can go a long way. So now we are done with the healing brush. Let's take a look at the work we just did. If I click on and off this healing brush, you can see it just got rid of some of these shadows, some of these spots and uneven tone. As you can see, it's a light retouching. We don't want to make any drastic changes as she doesn't need any drastic changes. Now we're moving on to the paintbrush tool. This is where we're smoothing out everything that we just did with the spot healing brush. You do want to make sure that you are making these subtle adjustments. I know I've already said this a thousand times, but it's really important to make things not look so artificial when we're retouching. So let's jump back in. So from there, we are just going to duplicate the next layer. So we are going to duplicate the layer we just did. So we're going to spot heal. We are going to duplicate this layer once again. So the next thing we are going to do is the paintbrush. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to click OK, and we have a new layer. So 
if we go here to the paintbrush tool, we are going to set our paintbrush to the softest. So I'm gonna put this at 0% hardness. It doesn't matter what size because we can quickly change that on our keyboard. And I'm going to make this opacity really low, about 4%. And you can play around with the flow and the smoothing as well. So from here, I'm just going to paint on her skin lightly. I'm going to hold down Alt to sample an area of the skin to then paint over. So I just want to keep resampling as I move through her face. So I'm just going to hold down Alt to click and sample that. And then I'm just going to start painting. I'm just going to speed this up a bit. You can take as much time as you need with the paintbrush tool. Remember to resample as you go along because you want to make sure that the color matches the skin. So now we are done with the paintbrush. If you see, I click on and off. You can see that it added just a little bit more softness to her face. Now we are going to make another layer. We are going to do the same thing that we did before. We are going to right click on our mouse and duplicate this layer. I'm going to name this Dodge because we will be using the Dodge tool. I'm gonna to click OK and we are set to go. Now we are going to use the Dodge tool. This tool is great if you want to increase the exposure in a targeted specific area on your photos. And this tool is also good for skin retouching as well. So let's jump back in and I'll show you how to do that now. So the dodge tool is right here. It is the circle with the line. And if I click and go into this window, you can see it's the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge tool. The dodge is to lighten anything. The burn tool is to burn anything. So it's to make it a bit darker. And the sponge tool is to saturate and desaturate. So you can play around with each of those if you want to adjust these different areas of your photo and be very specific about these. So I'm gonna use the dodge tool. I'm going to make this a bit bigger by pressing the brackets on my keyboard and I'm just going to lighten up this side of her face. I just want to make this eye a little bit lighter. And if you want to adjust the exposure, you can go up here to adjust that as well and the brush as well. I already have it set, so I set it to 0% hardness as you always want to do when you are painting on a photo and I set it to 4% exposure. So I do also want to dodge some of this texture in her hair. I love these highlights in her hair and I just want to make these a bit more intense. So now when I click on and off, you can see the tiny adjustments that I've made. Let's talk about the liquify tool. The liquify tool can be used in a controversial way because it can alter someone to make them look like a completely different person. But today we will not be doing that. The liquify tool is used to push and pull pixels into their desired place. So with this, we are going to use it to adjust her hair. So let's jump back in. So now we are going to use the liquify tool. We are going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time like we've done so many times. I'm just gonna go up here, duplicate layer, and I'm going to do liquify. And press okay. And now I'm gonna go up here to filter, and then I'm going to go to liquify. So here is a liquify tool. You get a whole another window that pops up. So I'm gonna use the first tool, which is the forward warp tool. You can go ahead and play around with each of these, but I do suggest using a big brush and I am going to just keep this set at 500, the density 50 and the pressure 100. So you want to make sure that you are making subtle changes with the liquify tool. You can really pull things off and make them look very funky. So I do just want to click and drag ever so slightly. I'm just going to be adding some more volume to her hair because I love these highlights here and I want to make them a bit more intense. But you do want to make sure that you are making these really subtle changes with this. And keep going until you get those small adjustments that are just right. And once you are done, you are just going to click OK. 
Now you can see that we have these highlights in her hair that are intensified and we use the liquefied tool to just exaggerate them a bit more. We are almost done for today. The last thing we are going to do is be making a layer mask. A layer mask is great if you want to make specific adjustments in your background or your model or whatever else you have going on in your photo. You can be changing the color and the exposure and all of that by creating a layer mask. So you want to make sure that you have shot in raw to have full flexibility with this edit. So let's head back in to our last bit. So again, we are going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to name this layer mask and press OK. And now we are going to go to filter and camera raw filter. So this is only available to you if you've shot in raw. So like I mentioned before, I highly suggest shooting in raw. So if you can change your camera settings to shoot in a raw file format. So here we have all of the adjustments that we had when we first opened up our raw file and I am just going to adjust the background a bit. I'm just going to increase this exposure. And I am going to go here to color mixer. I'm going to change the color in the background. I really love this texture, this blurry texture in the background, but I do want to make it so it matches her eyes a bit more and kind of blends in with the whole feel of this photo. So I'm turning the hue on these greens down. And then if I go here to saturation, I am also going to turn this saturation down. And with luminance, I am going to increase the luminance a bit on these yellows and these greens. And as you can see, now the background is so beautiful. It gives this really vintage feel. But now that you can also see, she has changed and she is a bit overexposed. So I'm going to show you how to fix that right now. So once we're done adjusting all of this, we're going to click OK. And now I'm gonna go here to the eraser tool and I want to make sure that my hardness is set all the way down to zero like we had it in all the other examples. And I'm just going to brush over her. So I'm going to keep this opacity at 100 and I am just going to lightly brush over her and her hair so we make this a layer mask. This is all about just changing the background and making these little tiny subtle adjustments. And I just wanna go over it again just to make sure that everything is erased that we don't want. And now once we are done, we can click this layer on and off and see how much this background really adds to the photo. Just that tiny color adjustment, it really matches her eyes and I really believe that it draws you into the photo. And now if you turn off all of these layers and you go ahead and turn off these, you can see that this is the before and this is the after. That is all for today. Let's take a look at that before and after to see the changes that we've made. Keep in mind that retouching isn't about changing someone's appearance, but about enhancing the photo. Remember to make those subtle changes because you want to keep things looking as realistic as possible. So thanks for following along and I will see you next time.